Hello everyone, you are watching 666, The Mark of the Beast, and Gematria, Part 1. Um, so when I first thought of the idea of making a video about 666, The Mark of the Beast, um, I thought, well, you know, that's an interesting idea and it'll be simple. Well, I was wrong. Um, in Part 1, I'm going to go through just The Mark of the Beast um, in general, how to uh, calculate the mark. Nothing to do about who is the Antichrist or the Beast or anything like that. Um, and then part two, I'm going to go over um, information about something called gematria, which I, I believe is a little bit different than calculating. Um, but I'll go over that in the next part. So... So this part is pretty simple, but it I've uh, broken it into two parts because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't too long. Last video I went into, the second part went 40 minutes and that was too long, so uh, I broke it into two parts. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. All right, so the first beast, the second beast, and the mark of the first. Basically what I mean by that section is um, what I kind of just explained that um, I'm, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the first beast, the second beast, and then the mark of the beast, which would be the first beast. So um, to begin with, we are going to read um, certain verses in Revelation chapter 13. If you would like, um, you can go through chapter 13 by yourself and read the whole thing um, in this video, and um, maybe even more so in the next video, I'm probably going to be um, referencing verses that I've either already referenced or referencing verses that I haven't even mentioned in this section. So, Revelation 13, 1 says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea. I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. On his horns were ten crowns, and on his heads blasphemous names. Revelation 13, 8 says, all who dwell on the earth will worship him, the beast. That's my insertion there. Everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the lamb who has been killed. Another way to translate this verse is everyone whose name has not been written in the book of life of the lamb who has been killed from the foundation of the world. The difference is um, the what from the foundation of the world means um, the, in Greek, then, uh, because of the way that the sentence is put together, um, it could either mean this translation, everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life, or it can mean um, of the lamb who has been killed from the foundation of the world. So it's in English, you move the phrase from the foundation of the world to make it say different things. Um, and just like in English, it's kind of the same thing, how sometimes you can take sentences two different ways. Um, obviously, the writer had one intention, but it's, it's possible to take it two different ways, so there's two different ways of translating it. Revelation 13, 11 and 12 says, I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. He makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose fatal wound was healed. Now, if we look back at the top, it says, um, oh, I guess I skipped that verse that says that. Okay, so um, in verse 2, it talks about how one of his heads looks like he was wounded to, to death, I think it says, um, yet it was healed or something like that. So, um, to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. Revelation 13, 16 through 18 says, He, in other words, the second beast, causes all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, and the free and the slave, to be given marks on their right hands or on their foreheads, and that no one would be able to buy or to sell unless he has that mark, the name of the first beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. He who has understanding let him calculate the name of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. So, 
uh, this is a subsection, calculating the number. In Greek and Hebrew, letters can be used to represent numbers. This is not numerology or some mystical interpretation. This is simply the way the languages work, as can be seen even today. So, um, for example, on coins in Greek, then uh, to show numbers because it was uh, it would take up less space instead of spelling out a number sort of like how we can spell three t-h-r-e-e -E, or we can use the symbol for three uh, because it was faster than they would use and they I think they still do actually I'm pretty sure they still do they use uh, letters to represent the numbers so letters can represent can be used to represent numbers in Greek and Hebrew an example of this in Greek can be seen in Luke chapter 3, verse 23. In English it reads, Jesus himself, when he began to teach, was about 30 years old, being the son, as was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli. In some Greek manuscripts, instead of saying eton triakonda, which can be translated as of years 30, it says eton lambda, which means the same thing. So like I was saying about um, spelling out a letter versus writing the symbol for a letter, this is three, or I'm sorry, not three, 30. This is 30 in Greek, triakonda. This is also 30 in Greek, lambda. Now, one thing I want to point out is first, as I said, lambda is a letter and it represents 30 in Greek. This symbol right here, I'm going to highlight it. That symbol right there is um, a symbol that signifies that the group of letters that precedes it, so in this case only one, lambda, is um, not a word, but a number. So lambda, this, this uh, symbol represents that lambda is a number. Another example can be seen in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. In English it reads, here is wisdom. He who has understanding, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. In some Greek manuscripts, instead of saying exekosia, exekonda, ex, which can be translated as 666, it says chi, xi, stigma. And again, you'll notice the symbol here. It sort of looks like a, um, an apostrophe, like a, a slanted apostrophe, um, but it's not. Misunderstandings. Have you ever heard that Monster Energy Drinks have 666 on the front of the can? Have you ever heard that the Mark of the Beast could be the www in the front of all website addresses? For example, www.dinoglass.com. These are both based on misunderstandings of how Greek and Hebrew letters represent numbers. If you were if you listen to the videos, they actually sound like they really know what they're talking about, but they misunderstand something that's very important in um, interpreting the WWW and the monster drink symbol and things like that. So let's um, talk more about that. The idea that monster drinks, energy drinks, have 666 on the front of them comes from the fact that the scratch marks on the can, three in number, look a lot like the Hebrew letter wow in modern Hebrew called Vav. And I, I'm ho I hope I'm saying that correctly. Wow, if I'm saying that correctly, is the Hebrew letter that in ancient Hebrew made a W sound instead of in modern Hebrew, which makes a V sound because it's pronounced Vav instead of Wow. Uh, which is the reason why some people also say the internet usage of WWW before a website address is the mark of the beast. So because um, the Hebrew letter wow is um, 
basically the Hebrew equivalent of W in ancient Hebrew, then they say WWW is the mark of the beast because there's three W's. I don't know if you know where I'm getting at, but so wow, shown here, this is in Hebrew, which I don't read Hebrew, but um, I work, I'm going to work around that a little bit in this video is the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. I'm not sure if this is true with Hebrew, but with Greek, the sixth letter can be used to represent the number six. So now maybe you kind of see where I'm getting at. So does this mean the three marks on monster drinks are the mark of the beast? What about www before a website address? Is wow 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 the same thing as 666 the mark of the beast the answer is no this is a misunderstanding of how the letters are used as numbers because i don't know hebrew and i'm not sure if the letter number equivalence so in other words um the first letter equals a in greek i don't know if that's true in hebrew um, though I know I'm, I'm a little confused about some of it. Um, actually, I, I'm pretty sure that at least the, f uh, the first letter is one all the way through nine. I, I think I know that, but then the other letters, I'm not sure, but I don't know. It's a little confusing for me because I don't understand Hebrew, which is why people get this mixed up because they don't know Hebrew either and they don't know Greek and they're trying to learn about it, but they're coming from the outside at least I know Greek that's otherwise I probably would have a very hard time understanding this I'm not sure if the letter number equivalents are just like they are in Greek uh, because I don't know Hebrew and I'm not sure if the letter number equivalents are just like they are in Greek I'm going to use Greek instead of Hebrew to show you what I mean so let's go back to 666 in Revelation chapter 13 verse 18 Remember what I said about 666 being exekosia, exekonda, ex in the Greek manuscripts, but in some Greek manuscripts instead being chi, xi, stigma. Notice that chi, xi, stigma is not the same letter three times in a row. Why is that if it means 666? When we use our number symbols in English, and by that I mean um, the, like this, one, nine, zero, we only use 10 different symbols for numbers, which would be one through nine and zero. That would equal 10, 10 total uh, symbols that we use for numbers. Each digit represents a different part of the number. So one, two, three, means 123 one being in the hundreds place two being in the tens place and three being in the ones place so because one is in the hundreds place it means 100 because two is in the twenties place then it means 20 and because three is in the three in the ones place it means three in Greek and in Hebrew, the position of the letters doesn't determine whether the letters represent the ones place, tens place, hundreds place, and so on. Instead, the letter used determines whether the number is 2, 20, or 200. And of course, I picked 2 as an example. Um, it could also be the difference between 1, 10, and 100, or 3, 30, and 300. In order to determine the number, the letters are added together. So, and I hope you're kind of able to follow me a little bit. So, alpha, 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 with this symbol, which shows that it that these are a uh, number. Alpha, meaning one, means three, not 111. Because you add these three alphas together, which equals three. The position of the alpha in the letter, or in the number, I mean. So even though this is uh, the third from the right, that doesn't mean that this is 100, this is 10, and this is, sorry, this is 1. That's not what it means. In Greek and in Hebrew, when you put them together, um, 
they still represent whatever they represent. So alpha always represents one in Greek, no matter where you put it in the number. Though normally gamma would be used for itself by itself for three instead of three alphas. So for example, um, this I just used to give you an example of what I'm talking about, but usually you'd use gamma or gamma as you'd say, um, because um, this is kind of the equivalent of saying one plus one plus one which is three, but it's, you would usually just use three. But this is just to show you that, um, to give you an example of how um, uh, in Greek, then the numbers are put together so that it equals three, not 111. It's different than in English. You add them instead of looking at their position. So even though the letters are added together, the order of the letters is still important. As you can see in chi, xi, stigma, chi equals or means 600. Xi means 60 and stigma means 6. Chi, xi, stigma means 666 or 666. So, conclusion. Because Greek is like Hebrew in this way, wow, wow, wow in Hebrew does not mean 666, but I believe 18. 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 18. Neither the marks on a monster drink nor the www that come before an internet address have anything to do with the mark of the beast. And then I wrote, Phew, that was close. So basically, another thing you I might want to point out is, um, even though we write it 666 and we say 666, maybe just because it's easier, um, I just want to remind everyone that's 666, not 666. Whether you write it with symbols that represent numbers like this in Greek, chi, xi, stigma, which is 666, or you write it um, out, you spell the, the number, it's still 666. We just say 666 because it's easier. Well, that's the end of this video, uh, this short video. I think that the next video will be longer. Um, I encourage you to uh, go to my website, look around. Um, I've been adding stuff lately, like over the last few months or so. Um, and if you uh, if you in, uh, like what you see, then or you or you would like to uh, ask for something else. Um, then just tell me you could uh, there's a contact form on my website um, you could e email me uh, my email is on that website um, and you could give me different ideas about uh, what videos I could make if you want to if you can think of anything that you would like to request that'd be great um, and if you can think of anything for the website that you'd like to request that would also be great so all right, well, thanks for watching.